But actually, the Rotterdam Festival O was the first one who invited us even before we got Golden Lions. Sometimes it ruins a bit of a private life, that's what you mean. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, sort of, yeah, that's the subtext. <laughs> there is this responsibility in terms of artistic creation too. It's so amazing, you, you even don't have to invent any surreal narratives, it's already there, you just need to notice mm -hmm. and to, yeah, to put it into words. Making art in the circumstances is, it feels completely useless. Is there something you want to say to, to the audience, to the people that come to Sun and Sea? Yes, when you come, please move, don't stand in one position. Uh -huh. It's super important that you change, it's not a regular piece of uh, theater. Kunstenaars, componisten, makers, zangers. Het is een intrigerend soort. We zien ze door het landschap trekken. Op zoek naar vruchtbaar land. En ze lijken te overleven in alle omstandigheden en laten zich door geen bureaucratische roofdieren of financiële droogtes tegenhouden. Door en droog was het al in het veld van kunst en cultuur, maar de overtreffende trap van bar is inmiddels wel bereikt. En zelfs nu blijven ze bedrijvig, te midden van alle normale van tegenwoordig. Sterker nog, het lijkt wel alsof ze nog harder werken dan eerder om hun kunst de wereld in te dragen. Maar wat bezielt deze mensen om in deze tijden dit werk te blijven doen? Is het verstandsverbijstering, bedwelming door Apollo, god van de kunsten... of zijn het de goede oude en nieuwe muzen die hen uitzonderlijke stamina bezorgen? Welkom bij de podcast Zijn ze nou helemaal bevlogen? van O. Mijn naam is Simone van Hulst en samen met Björn Plooster als technische steun en toeverlaat... ga ik met makers in gesprek om geïnitieerd te raken in de wonderenwereld van bezieling. People have been planning all year long... Their 10 days off. Their vacation, which they only take once every year. Now sitting all sweaty in the airport waiting room. Golden hot sand exists only in the brochure. So, while rain and wind hit us in the face in early April Rotterdam, we will talk to the artists creating the performance Sun and Sea Marina. The opening lines that you just heard are part of this performance, taking place on an indoor beach. Really an indoor beach? Yes, really an indoor beach. And this indoor beach has traveled the globe, each time looking slightly different, but carrying the same messages, confining different meanings within everyone and everything. Rugile Barciu Kaite, Vaiva Granite and Lina Lavelite. These are the three heroines, or three-headed dragon, as one of them mentioned in another interview, that have given birth to internationally acclaimed and much-anticipated performance Sun and Sea. Rugila works as filmmaker and theater director and is based in Lithuania. Faiva is a writer, a playwright and a poet. Uh, unfortunately, the third member, Lina, uh, could not make it today. And she's the artist and musician um, living and working in London and Vilnius. It's not the first time um, these uh, three have joined forces. Their piece, Have a Good Day, from uh, 2013, was described as an opera for 10 cashiers, uh, supermarket sounds and a piano and was filled with arias and beeping barcode scanners, delved into the emotional labor of female shop workers and was an intense success. Sun and Sea Marina will have its Dutch premiere at O Festival at an amazing venue, the former Ferro, now known under the collective name Brutus. It's really a fascinating and wonderful experience. I myself have seen the piece in Venice at the Biennale and walked around somewhat mesmerized the day after. So I'm really happy to talk to you too. Um, And in, in doing the research, I even found out that play, the play has its own Wikipedia page. Were you aware of that, Rukila and Viva? I think we don't control it. You don't control it. Because our PR uh, team, they were trying to uh, alter it, but it's impossible somehow. Yeah, that's <laughs> such a mystery about uh, Wikipedia, huh? Indeed. But it exists. Sun and Sea has an, uh, its own page, so it's really uh, an entity, uh, a sort of autonomous entity. But we have a, our own official page yeah, too. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So how have you been, the two of you? Oh, good. And by the way, hello, Simone, and thank you for having us here. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm good. 
Mm, glad to talk with you. Yeah. And you're based in Canada right now, or based, or you're you're in Canada? Yeah, at the, at moment. the, mo at the moment I'm I'm visiting uh, in Canada. Yeah. So it's the day just started now. The day just started. Yeah, that's a bit different. It's uh, five o'clock in the afternoon here. And uh, Rugila, what's your uh, where are you what's your whereabouts at this moment? Where uh, where am I? I think I'm in Vilnius. In <laughs> you think you are? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm in Vilnius. Yeah. Indeed, although in this online world, we are everywhere. No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it's also something that really intrigued me. I just talked to Viva already a bit about it, but the play it it uh, premiered in 2017 already. Uh, so you have been been traveling the globe already for almost five years. And what is that like? I guess not five years. This traveling did after the Venice. It was like an outcome of getting the award of of a Golden Lion. But still, this traveling has been um, been frozen a bit due to pandemic, mm -hmm. which hit right after 2019. Mm -hmm. when we closed the door of the pavilion of oh, the yeah. Lithuanian pavilion. Uh, yeah. I mean, when when we finished the showing. But actually, uh, Rotterdam Festival O, which then uh, was named Opera Dagen, was the first one who invited us even before we got. Golden Lions. So oh, yeah. that was in our very early plans to yeah. come to. That's a Rotterdam. that's a good good detail, not even a detail, a really important one actually to mention. Yeah, and so now you're finally here, almost in May. Uh, but you did, I mean, uh, you you the, the 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 places and venues you visited with this uh, with this performance are really like from Russia to Belgium to London to Paris. It's really, and I think you're also going to Japan still. Is that correct? Yeah, some of the venues you mentioned are still awaiting in future. Yeah. But yes, we will have even Black Sand in Black Iceland. Sand? Really? That, that sounds exciting for us. Yeah, that is exciting. Because it's also one of the things that's really interesting about this piece that you don't really know as a spectator because you don't know the behind the scenes, all the stuff that's happening. But for each venue, you have to go look for this huge amount of sand, of course. And is that something you're also involved in, or is that more of the, the technical production side? Uh, the sand, exactly, it's always in the hands of the inviting institution. Oh, yeah. Uh, However, sorry to interrupt. However, they do send the samples uh, usually to Rugila mm -hmm. and yeah, to check if the color is like meets our expectations and yeah. if the grid is also what we want. Yeah, because like sand is, is not sand, it's not the same sand everywhere, of course. I think that's really a, really a fascinating detail that you get sand in the sample over the mill and then uh, yeah, already a bit in touch with the, with the material of the actual venue. Yeah, well, what concerns in general, what concerns other technical details, we have uh, amazing team, production team and technical team. And we are uh, in marriage with uh, Never Neverlands already because uh, Lik van Gerwen, who is doing all the difficult uh, mm -hmm. stuff in preparation, she is on board. So, so she's from O Festival too. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's, uh, she's really your, uh, your rock, I think, in managing yeah, yeah, all the technical is. stuff. Yeah. She is. Yeah. 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 That's really uh, good to do and do a little shout out for her uh, at this uh, podcast. <laughs> so I'm, I'm also wondering like what you, uh, you mentioned a bit um, that you're not, of course, like not constantly working with this performance due to the pandemic and, and everything, but still, uh, what is it like to be involved with the same piece for almost four or five years? Why, why? Maybe you have. Uh, yeah, it's kind of uh routine uh, like every day like we have i would say 15 different chats on whatsapp mm -hmm. like one chat rugila viva another uh, with production team another is for singers and you still you always have different questions you have to discuss so it's mm -hmm. like being in charge of uh, some uh, big organism you have to take care and 
to foster it. Yeah. And you might think that it's very boring to, to travel and it's always the same as the, the opera performance usually is being shown for four or five hours. But in locations, the piece changes itself. And we have performed in like abandoned swimming pools in like former car factories. Um, what else? In in, in, oh, in baroque theaters. So mm. so each space like adds something to the piece itself, and it's it's never the same. Mm -hmm. And not to mention like volunteers which join. Yeah. Yeah, because that says also a unique virtue or a feature of your of the piece is that um, I think I I saw somewhere that you work with uh, approximately 150 people on the 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 crew, and then you still have the extra volunteers that that come in every time and also bring their own yeah their own self and their own ideas to the play, right? That was in Venice. Uh, the 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 amount of people you are mentioning that was actually the final mm -hmm. uh, number for our long run half year run in, in venice but oh, yeah. in general in tours we do have uh, up to 30 traveling team mm -hmm. members who are uh, who are arranging and then the inviting institution comes yeah and brings the volunteers to yeah. and yeah the technical mm, support yeah Exactly. But exactly. in general, the piece is always changing. That's maybe that that what keeps us exciting because mm -hmm. uh, let, maybe for me that was the longest uh, live uh, art involvement where you do travel with a piece so long and it's never the same. Mm -hmm. So that is the nice thing about it. Yeah, because I was also wondering, like, of course, uh, um, yeah, you get asked a lot of the same questions probably about the piece. And uh, I was wondering, what's the most frequently asked question after these five years? I think you can predict it. No? Where did the idea come from? <laughs> <laughs> How did you three met together? Yeah. And so on. Yeah. Yeah. That's really <laughs> interesting. It's... Yeah. To see what people come up with question wise. Yeah. And what, is there a question that you would imagine? Like, why, why wouldn't people ask me that after seeing the, the performance? Mm. I think we do get very really questions which really surprise us because we we spoke maybe too much about it, but yeah. that's our problem. And <laughs> yeah, but it is interesting. Yeah, usually, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Usually yeah, usually you can predict questions and sometimes we even like you know, answer the answer just comes pops up from the head, but yeah, we we do experience surprises or some people just share their insights, which you think, oh, I've mm -hmm. never thought about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. I I immediately had the sort of the um, the when I heard or when I saw that the the piece aired in two seven two thousand seventeen, I thought that by now it would be a toddler in human age approximately. And is that also something you see in the play that it matured a bit maybe, or is that the wrong direction to think in? Mm, I guess it, it it gets more and more independent. What do you think, Viva? I I mean, the the members of the, the singers, they, for example, last time uh, I personally couldn't join because of COVID last tour, and we get... Uh, messages from singers that they see some problems with colors mm -hmm. that, that's not their uh, you know that's not what they were instructed to mm -hmm. do but now the team works as a really multitasking in every possible way mm -hmm. so yeah, we have we are all growing up yeah and is that also the yeah. same for you is it is it also do you also do things you're not like that that are not not your task officially or I guess always we do come with some anything we notice what's not working well enough. Mm -hmm. You go and fix it in whatever uh, level. Yeah. But usually everything goes well because we have an amazing team. Yeah. Yeah. And Viva, how's that for you? Uh, I guess you you was right saying that it's like a 
toddler phase. It's not an infant like in 2017 when we were just starting to make the piece. It was done in, in Lithuanian and we were doing auditions uh, and then uh, after meeting singers there was the development of the text and, and melodies and then we were trying to put it in a space so it was yeah like having a baby and uh, taking care of it and now the piece has grown itself because we have experienced so much and we yeah we, we have been traveled and we had um, the piece in Lithuanian and then in English, which was also like preparation of, of a new mm -hmm. uh, production. Yeah. Did it change a lot in the, the, the way from the, from the Lithuanian to the English version? Well, yes, uh, the language itself has its different rhythm and the logic and the syllables. So it had influence of the, Logic line and some sub meanings in the text have also slightly changed. The entire message is the same. The same. The same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And is there is there one of the venues or the the places where you went that you specifically remember? I personally do remember very well the uh, Luckenwalde, the swimming pool, mm. abandoned swimming pool from Bauhaus mm -hmm. period. And so it was like a new, something very new and site specific in a way that like we are always looking for some super uh, strange and different places. It to bring in, but so that was mm -hmm. one of them. Yeah. Memorable. And for you, Fiva? I think uh, lots of venues we have visited were really like exciting, exciting and sometimes like mind blowing. But if you ask me which comes to my mind, I would say uh, the location, the venue in Vilnius. We had the performance there in December last year. And it's abandoned taxi park, very mm. like, it has this brutalistic architecture and the hate where the audience is watching uh, the performances. I don't know how, how high it is. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know 20, the number. 23 meters. Oh, wow. So you see just like this well, uh, like, it's like really like angle and... I don't know, maybe mm. we could, you know, share some pictures, but it's really impressive and gives some goosebumps. Yeah, I can but imagine. The super nice thing about Vilnius was that we could travel, the audience could travel and see the see the beach from the close-up and then to go up and to see it from mm -hmm. closer to the cosmic perspective. Oh, that's really that interesting. Was, yeah. That was also an initial idea that uh, it's nice if audience can change angles. Yeah. So in some points we have this possibility in just one level. In ideal case, it's also vertical change. Yeah. yeah. And how is uh, Rotterdam in that sense? Is this going to be your ideal situation or not? It's super exciting because it will be round. We mm -hmm. never had when we, it's, it's a amazing space, amazing location from what we saw in pictures and the, there will be a construction built in, but in some cases, the constructions, the, the scaffolds, they are not, uh, they, they work well because you can imagine scaffolds in those kind of industrial spaces in general as a, as a natural element. And it will be round, uh, like repeating the structure of, mm -hmm. of the venue itself. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm really looking forward to see how it how it's in reality. Yeah, and have you already got a sample of the sand here? No, no. but we trust we trust our technical director Lick, who yeah. is <laughs> local there. So sand specialist, as she is. So, and the question that also pops up, of course, is: Have you been at the beach yourselves during the when the show is airing? Yes, you mean in 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 the visiting the beach, the natural mm -hmm. beach. No, I mean uh, like in the in the performance. Ah, inside. Yeah. 
Yes, of course. Yeah. Too. What, yeah. And what is it like? What does it do to your to your take on the performance? It it helps to yeah to hear to feel the atmosphere bef- uh, among the singers. And also, you can hear how it, how it sounds. So it's usually, when we go to the beach, it's for like technical reasons. But on the other hand, it's like these melodies kind of help to relax, and you lie on the sand and just immerse yourself into peace. So sometimes it's very like therapeutic. Yeah, I can imagine. But that's also really a. A great quality of the piece that it's still able to, like you said, to immerse you even while you're, you know, at the roots of this of this whole thing. It's really special. Yes, only you. We always have to have the the right swimsuits, like color wise. Mm-hmm. Like Rugile is very strict with with this. Like, oh, don't go with this swimsuit. It's too too dark. Mm-hmm. Or or too bright because yeah. <laughs> Our uh, in our ideal scenario, the beach is without any bright, uh, bright soloist in terms of things. Mm-hmm. Not only in singing, but also in things. So everyone is equal uh-huh. for the eye too, more or less. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And does it also characterize you, Rukila, as, as someone who's really looking for details and for stuff to be, you know, sort of synchronized? Yes, and also I guess it comes to our, maybe even our way of collaboration, non-dominating, so that, yeah, it's it, it also, also comes, the pastel, the idea of pastel, mm-hmm. and choir is in sync with our methods of collaboration. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's something that, that probably the audience will never find out. As long as you don't say it, but it's really interesting to uh, to see this parallel, indeed. Yeah, and, and if you have to um, characterize Viva, Rugila, what, what would you say? Viva? Mm-hmm. Is she is... Now, now, now it's a question which uh, gives a <laughs> new impulse. Viva is super uh, smart and very diplomatic, <laughs> usually. And uh, uh, with very, very rich uh, imagination and uh, uh, and master of words and poetry and uh, super good friend and gentle and kind person. <laughs> wow. That's a oh. recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> you have to meet her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward. And Faiva, could you do the same thing for Rugile? Oh, yes. Uh, that's a very unexpected question. Mm, mm, but yeah, Rugile, is a, if, if I could describe as a person, so she's very like caring, uh, generous, um, very has this like gentle soul. And as a colleague, she would, I would say, is very ambitious and always sees the bigger picture and sees no obstacles to achieve it and usually her her ambitionness comes true and really um, can sacrifice all her energy and, and sleep just to have the right color or the details which is like this has kind of positive way, obsession and perfectionism, which uh, contributes to the artworks she does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's nice. We had a few glitches, a few glitches, but I think we got the message like a a positive uh, OCD kind of perfectionist, but then all on the healthy side. I think that's that's sort of my recap. Thank you, Viva. It's uh, very generous. Should we do the same about Lena, who is not here? Yeah, because please. She's the third. Uh, but, head. <laughs> no, just thinking, would it be like a gossiping or, or <laughs> would it be correct? That's interesting. Do you think to do that? I think if, when it's positive, it's okay, you know? 
<laughs> so Luna is our third dragon, third, mm -hmm. third, third head. Yeah. I think she has also uh we we I guess we share in a way the qualities uh of each other too a little bit, but her like her particular uh talent is in in uh no i i couldn't say particular talent because she she has uh like we're sharing the fields in, in and we're starting from the idea from the very beginning all three of us and we don't divide too much uh like from the conceptual uh from the conceptual starting point. So I think she is super uh, dedicated in finding the right concept as all of us. And she's a real a warrior in a very positive way, very with a strong stamina. And I think here very strong, uh, when it comes to the music writing, her very strong, quality is that she uh, puts puts the lyrics in a in a way which is even you can grasp it even better than when they are just uh, read mm -hmm. so her music is also go goes to the same uh, same direction of non dominating so mm -hmm. none of the field is more important than the other yeah. and and she's super energetic and uh, when she's in a good mood everything is <laughs> everything is uh, in light because mm -hmm. she brings a lot of light mm -hmm. yeah oh that sounds that sounds really interesting it would be really interesting to ask more questions but she's not here of course so yeah let's stay away from the gossipy part um, but as I can hear, these three descriptions of the, the three-headed dragon in total seems a very strong-willed and very intelligent, but also really a, a, an organism with, with a really strong stamina, as you said, Rugila, about, uh, about Lina also. Is, is, that, is that the same for the three of you? Do you all three have such a strong stamina in general? I would say so. Yeah. Maybe it has different shapes and it's, it's manifested in, in different ways, but... I I think no I I know we do have we share the stamina yeah and how how because yeah is that uh, yeah the question that always is on my mind is um is about the the balance between work and your private life but I also know with artists and musicians in general that that's a bit of a weird question but is that something you think about in daily life with all the stamina that you got that it it sometimes it ruins a bit of a private life that's what you mean yeah sorry yeah sort of yeah that's the subtext <laughs> so it does of course yeah when it comes to 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 the you know to the high points of being productive uh, having to be productive mm -hmm. of course it takes away time from something something else yeah and if yeah. you say having to be productive is that something you are critical of or that's just as it is because it's also a sort of a modern day thing I guess. If it's a question for me, as I told it, if that was, I'm referring now probably to the most peak mo moments, mm -hmm. like periods of life where I would never want to come back, actually. Mm -hmm. the, the ones where when you have to do too much and in too little time and so on. But that's that's also related to the result we are having now. Uh, so, yeah, but the, I would say health and safety first mm -hmm. for the future. Yeah, that's a nice intention. <laughs> and for you, five hours, that? Um, I guess this correlation with the, with the career and personal life is always uh, something I'm I'm thinking about and experiencing clashes. And I don't know. I think there is even no borderline between that it's it's like difficult to divide it mm -hmm. but as Rugila mentioned we experienced some peak moments and which were a bit too uh, destructive so now 
find islands when I'm try to disconnect from uh, uh, this creative mode or work and just to to be and to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how do you how do you live those moments or the the time on those islands you described? What do you do? Uh, it's usually being in nature, walking, like a simple thing, mm -hmm. reading a book. And think immersing myself in a certain narrative. Yeah. Yeah. So nature and reading. Yeah. Or spending time with nature, reading, and also people like dear people who usually get less uh, attention mm -hmm. as, as you have to, as I have to balance my schedules. So yeah, spending time with with the with the family members. Yeah. Yeah. And are those family members also involved in the arts or not at all? No. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that's easier to disconnect yourself from that scene then. Those moments. Yeah. yeah. And for you, Rugila, what do you do when you have to disconnect? Or do you disconnect at all? Yeah, I I have to. You Like very recently, I moved to live uh, to the seaside. And... Uh, It's almost too good to be true, but there is a sea next doors and <laughs> the forest. So wow. it's, it, it helps a lot because, yeah, before I lived in this place where uh, uh, my nature was, <laughs> the, you know, the yeah. green. Luckily, it's natural, but... <laughs> In general, it wasn't enough, I felt. Like, if you have to reach for nature it, with a car or even, you know, to walk long to reach nature, mm -hmm. you you are a bit imprisoned. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah it's, nice if, it's nice to have a possibility to work from home when it's further from the city. Yeah, I can imagine having the best of both worlds. A forest and the sea is quite a uh, quite special to have It as is. neighbors. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's very cool. So um, I think when we talk about stamina and about what yeah makes you thrive and what makes you you know endure the things you have to endure, it's time for our uh, little format that we have. <laughs> So we talked about it already a bit, but uh, I asked you in advance to think about an idea or a person or an object that keeps you going. And I wonder uh, how you both uh, answer that question. Probably for me, it's not uh, an object, but just the idea of, like, if... Uh, Just knowing if, if like I have hard times, I know that uh, they will pass. I don't know when, like sooner or later, and that there will be even maybe more, more hard times. So just to accept that very moment and to, yes, yeah, wait. So probably acceptance helps and being grateful for little things, mm -hmm. even though it sounds banal. Not at all. What kind of little um, things are you thinking spring. about? Spring. Mm, as I mentioned, like dear people, either friends or, or family members or even a cat hmm. you know, is like running around. <laughs> Or even the spring as a metaphor, like seeing how all the buds and trees come to into green after the period of being frozen. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice to have a balance, uh, as I hear you talk, between the outside and the inside. So the acceptance is more something you do yourself. The things on the outside, like the cats and the, the people and the spring, can also make you go on. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's nice. And for uh, Rugile? Uh, the idea, 
the idea would be that I can stop, like it's possible to stop whatever, however difficult it is or however important is the work you are doing, you have a right to stop and uh, go out Mm -hmm. to drop everything and uh, to come with a fresh energy, but not thinking about moment when you come back, but just be in the moment and drop everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this freedom of uh, intentions and freedom of actions is probably the, Mm -hmm. the idea and the action, which helps. Yeah. And it's a big privilege to have this freedom. Don't you think so? It is indeed, yes. But I guess if you are fighting for it from the very beginning, you have it, no? It depends. Of course. This is interesting. Because why why do you say it's a privilege, Iva? Uh, I don't know, just thinking about some uh, people who are are in the position and they have freedom like their job doesn't allow it for the family circumstances so when I think I think I also have this I mentioned I'm like really grateful for it and see it as a privilege and not as a common thing would people everyone have it mm-hmm. yeah you agree Rugula? In a way, but uh, I just memorized one uh, person who was tired of his job and he he just quitted it, no matter how important it is to earn money. But another job will come. And I don't know, this freedom to choose is uh, if you are not in a a war zone and if it's not, uh, if it's in a way normal conditions. in in different levels it 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 may bring some fresh air mm-hmm. but i i know i i agree with Baiwa that it's privilege in a way we have it mm-hmm. yeah and that you're also aware of that and I, might i also wonder like it's because you're both also from the 80s right like 83 if i remember correctly 83, 84. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're also part of my generation, Bjorn's generation. I'm not sure. Approximately. <laughs> that also has as a sort of basic uh, understanding that you have to work hard and be productive, like we already said. So also it says something about you both that you're able to, ta- to think outside of that, right? Hopefully. Mm-hmm. And where did, where did you learn that? Or where did you, where did you get that from? Mm. Not to be productive, you mean? Yeah, or thing. to yeah, to have a bit of resilience there, or you know. Why? Uh, maybe want to start? I just pull. I guess from the experience I had of experiencing burnout, mm-hmm. or yeah, some of these destructive moments of being too productive or too dedicated for for the work but abandoning my own like emotional health so this brought some awareness that you have to pause and to stop and this productivity i guess in terms of our trio we we are like we have lots of invitations like to to produce the new piece and probably that would be what to do the it being having this you know great career and cognition but we don't want to do that just for the sake of doing and to go with this wave but rather to wait for the right moment the right uh, topic and to to have the idea and just to foster it and let to grow and of course we are creating the product and sentency is also is part of this capitalistic circle but we still are aware of it and and want not um, don't want to to rush and to over produce mm-hmm. things yeah is that something you remind each other of also during the process 
I think we have in a, on a very, very similar feeling that, and also we all three, all three of us has this solo career. So if any of us has a wish to be more productive, uh, you know, you mm-hmm. have a, you have this possibility. Yeah. Mm, so definitely no rush in our trio. And I think we have a bit different, uh, maybe a, mm, speed in our solo works too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I also, I also like, uh, like Viva said, it can be very tempting, of course, if you have a momentum like you have right now with the, with the tour of Sun and Sea. It's also, I, I don't know, it's also, yeah, a bit of a temptation to just keep on going and keep on going. So I think it's really... Yeah, really uh, also unique that you also remind each other of that. Like, do we really want this still? What are we part of? Stuff like that. It, yeah, it's also uh, it's also part of ecology uh, in, in, in a um, layer of ideas mm-hmm. and creative processes and works. It's so much done that you really have to be uh, careful. Mm-hmm. And what do you mean with it's part of the ecology? That's what you said, right? Yeah, well, uh, if we are thinking of not of producing and consuming less and producing less in terms of things and objects, which, you know, sooner or later becomes trashes, uh, there is this responsibility in terms of artistic creation too, I don't know, not everything what is uh, presented as art or, or theater or film, not everything is maybe worth uh, in terms of, like maybe it's too quickly done or maybe it's not so important uh, to be seen. And mm-hmm. so in not to judge anyone, but having this responsibility inside helps, I guess, n- not to overproduce. Mm-hmm. Is that is that a, a hard hard thing to remember? Because it's also you could also sort of annihilate your own ideas with that thought. No, I don't think that. Oh, sorry. Uh, I don't think that we have to remind that to each other, or it's just I guess that's what we are aware of, and we the way we feel and it just concerns our trio that we are not in a rush even though we could take an advantage of uh, current circumstances and mm-hmm. as Rugla to have our inner pace and besides these crazy tours we are doing we have our solo works and some of us are like really busy all the time some of us are developing their own projects slowly yeah yeah, Viva cool. just wrote a book. Uh, sorry for this, uh, add, adding this, but no, Viva, Viva just wrote a book, which w- which is also have English translation. I'm always, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just haven't read it yet, but mm-hmm. it's just really yeah, it, it was just recently published. Oh, that's it was cool. written a bit some time ago, but yeah. it was. Came, came now in two languages, English and Lithuanian. And what's the title? Uh, it's Roses and Potatoes. And actually, when you asked about what keeps uh, you going or what helps you to, yeah, not to lose hope, uh, this also could be the image of, of Rose and Potato, this kind of Frankenstein having Rose. Um, like, it's the trip botanists do with uh, with roses and they want to have the healthy flower they stick it in a potato and potato is someone something which goes from the earth like this tonic object gives all the nutrients for the rose mm-hmm. and it like blooms so this might be an object um, mm-hmm. i don't have this you don't have it no well we see potato. it yeah as you describe it that's really a, really an amazing image to to keep in mind um, and it also takes me to, but I don't know if this is a lot, if this makes sense, but the, uh, the subject I also wanted to talk to you about is that I think it's really cool how you sort of navigate between the big themes, like stuff like ecology and, and, uh, uh, yeah, more, more, um, activist 
matters um, uh, between that and the the more mundane. That's also something that comes back a lot in your work, I think. And I really, yeah, I would really like you to to talk a bit about that. Like, how do you navigate between those two sort of seemingly op- uh, sort of seemingly opposite things? You, you, I I wonder whom to start because if it's do you mean the libretto of the details in in libretto in in sun and sea or in general? Oh, in general, yeah. Mm-hmm. I Why guess uh, like yeah, we do we did uh, two works: opera Have a Good Day and Sun and Sea, and they both uh, they look like two different pieces but they they both talk about uh, consumption and capitalism and when we started um, both operas we we knew that we want to to talk about these big topics through the very mundane uh, narratives as as like ecology is a very big topic and you even don't know how to start to talk about it it's so like scary and like a lot of information so the the characters you see on the beach they they sing very at at first glance uh, simple stories and these microns gives you the big picture so it's our method of working like zooming in and zooming out Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that sounds clear and is that also something you have in your your daily personal life that you sort of go from from the big to the the small and and back? Mm, Yeah, I guess, I don't know, personally, for me, observing the daily life, um, it's like, it's so amazing. You, You even don't have to invent any surreal narratives. It's already there. You just need to notice and mm-hmm. to, yeah, to put it into words. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And um, I also wonder, because we have a little, another a little format for you. Just a minute. So now it's time to uh, brainstorm a bit about your relationship to the O Festival. Is it a relationship that's characterized by uh, monogamy, polyamory? Is it more a situationship or more like a sugar daddy or auntie situation? What's your take on that? That's an interesting question. Like we we have experience with O Festival when it was called Opera Opera Dagen uh, with Have a Good Day we came with our first work. So, uh, situationism, I heard this word. <laughs> Situationship, yeah. It, yeah, there were many situations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so not like a standard relationship, but more something that it's sort of circumstantial. Yeah, I remember that's the first time when we met our technical director, uh, Lik van Gerven. Mm-hmm. And we came, we have a good day, and uh, we noticed that it would be good to change, uh, to, to move to the stage instead of being where everything was prepared, to move on stage. Mm-hmm. And that was, from the technical perspective, that was crazy, of course. Mm-hmm. And I remember how professional everyone was, from the technical team. And I remember how strict Lick was uh, when she said no for this change. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that's uh, good that we will be more prepared this mm-hmm. time. So the situations will be softer, hopefully. Mm-hmm. And for you, Viva, how do you see that? Uh, relationship with the festival. Mm-hmm. Uh, Probably some 
romantic relationship as uh, <laughs> if you, you you know you suggested this marriage polygamy so i don't know probably not marriage but um, romantic love as we were separated uh, because of the pandemic but we are going to meet each other mm -hmm. and finally this is going to be shown in rotterdam yeah so it's kind of romantic yeah, <laughs> and, very and romantic. first love too. First love because of we. It was a first uh, festival. <laughs> yeah, who invited Sun and Sea too. Yeah, you just said that, huh? Before even you got the the award of the Golden Lion at the Biennale. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it was sort of early adapter, uh, first love kind of situation, and a romantic one. I think that's really nice. Also, uh, has a lot of anticipation. Uh, sound yes. sounding from it. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's really cool. So, um, what's on your program this week, the rest of the week, just to get a bit of an insight into what your life is like? Uh, we are now preparing to uh, make, to, to, we're arranging the events of our first opera, Have a Good Day, in Vilnius uh, as a support for Ukraine. Mm. Uh, for, for Yeah, so that that's our this week's plan. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Mm, well, the the war, the topic of war is uh, what touched us and blown our mind, to be more precise. And uh, we are just uh, trying to be useful in any way possible and making art in this in the circumstances is it feels completely useless mm. in a way but uh, to have a motivation to continue what was planned for, from before so we're trying to build any links possible how to be yeah. useful in this strategy yeah it's a big question indeed yeah 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 yeah, we talked about that also in the in the previous podcast. Indeed, what in what ways art can contribute, or and it was also the conclusion that it was really important uh, to be to stay sort of mentally active also and creatively active also, even though some people are stunned by the war, of course. Yeah, how's that for you, Viva? What's your take on that? Yeah, a bit yes, yeah, similar. Trying to find the ways how how to be useful and to contribute not only as an artist but as a human being. Mm -hmm. And we all will also show have a good day with Ukrainian subtitles. So as uh, Lithuania is having lots of refugees uh, fleeing the war, there would be there will be some yeah people coming there and. Probably just spending 50 minutes uh, not thinking or like, I mean, just, yeah, just having some outing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like the same effect you also mentioned when it was about sun and sea, actually, when you were in the, in the piece yourself, sort of a bit of a, a meditative space to be at ease a bit. Mm, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just to go back because we have to uh, get to uh, to uh, yeah closing of the of the podcast. Um, is there something you want to say to to the audience, to the people that come to Sun and Sea? Yes, when you come, please move. Don't stand in one position. Uh -huh. It's super important that you change. It's not a regular piece of uh, theater. Yeah, it's some. And if you want, come to the beach too. I'm sure that O Festival will accommodate your wish. Come to the beach as a, you mean a volunteer to be in the piece, right? Yes, I hope yeah. it will be possible here too, yeah. because it brings another perspective. If you are planning to do it, better come to see it from above first and then, or do it opposite, but uh, yeah. To have both uh, both uh, sides of the piece. It would be the full feeling yes yeah that's really interesting i'm sure there will be a lot of great uh, rotterdam people in the piece in the end and this is a really great thing to say move people we will remind them <laughs> Viva, is there something you still want to say to the audience mm. see you soon and hopefully this happens 
no not any catastrophe happens mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i totally agree no catastrophes from here please so rugila and viva thanks a lot for this talk i really enjoyed it and uh, please give our regards also to lina who cannot be here today but was there in the spirit of course and uh, as soon as we see you in may we will make sure you uh, get a personal gift from us to thank you for the conversation Thank um, you very much. And thank you for surprise questions too. Yeah. That was, that was a, nice. <laughs> it's an honor, really. And uh, for the people that are listening, thank you so much for listening and being there with us. Um, you can come and see Sun and Sea Marina at O Festival from May 25 until May 29. Uh, don't wait too long getting your tickets because it's a unique event that many, many spectators will want to see. And as we just heard, move around whenever you come to the performance. Uh, big thanks to you all. Please keep an eye on the festival program. And uh, we see you um, from the 20th uh, of May until the 29th of May. Thank you a lot. Thanks. So much. Yeah, that was really a nice talk. Thank you both so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's always interesting and surprising to see whatever comes up. But I think we managed quite well also with the technical side. Yeah. Yes, thank you. As Rugila said, questions were really nice. It, it wasn't just, you know, repeating our song we, we usually do, but it made us to think and challenge our minds. Oh, that's really nice yeah. to hear. Yeah, I, I, saw, I, I saw an interview with you uh, with a curator from Croatia, I think. I think that was in December somewhere, December 2021, 20, I think. And I also saw a bit in your expressions that you were asked a lot of the same questions. So it was also an intention for me to try to see if uh, I can elicit some different was, responses. If it was seen in our expressions, that's uh, not very good. Mm. Thank no, you for not, <laughs> not that you were bored or something, but it's more like, I don't know, I can imagine also that people are asking a lot of the same questions because they wonder about the same things, of course, but yeah. I hope today was different indeed for you. So thank you for telling me that. It was, thank you. Okay, so I will see you in May. I will make sure I find you somewhere. Yes, I'm please. I'm really excited do. yeah, to see that there. And uh, please give our best to Lena, yes. as we said. We will. She's, she's, she's super we sorry. Will. Thank you. That's fine. That's okay. Thank you. Have a nice day or thank evening. Bye. Bye. Bye, both thank of you. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Oh.